um, I think the very important thing for everyone leave aside the data scientists i think the audience will comprise of many people coming from business the core developers and the science scientists themselves who are working on the ground is uh, don't have this fomo what i mentioned in the beginning the fear of missing out don't just rush into ai always do a trade off between what will i gain versus is it something that i'm really missing out if i don't end up using ai into this particular problem um generally what ha- what happen is you try to put ai into a particular cookie cutter goal mold and mm. then you say that i have to force fit this solution into this problem rather do the other way around have a problem whatever you think is going to be if solved will give you a significant gain or yield so significant gain to your business hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the engartica interview series i'm your host kimberly and we are really excited to have you join us today today we have vidhi chok data transformist and ai strategist and a senior manager at walmart global tech on the show welcome to the show vidhi we are so glad to have you join us today thank you for having me The Engartica series is a powerhouse of insights from industry experts and influencers from around the world. A platform that provides latest news on AI, automation, and technologies that will help you grow your business. Come be a part of our community where we learn, share, and grow with us. So, diving into a straight uh, interview with you, Vidhi, we have a couple of questions for you. Diving into our first one is: What are the challenges uh, implementing AI as a function? uh for the priorities or resources uh that different countries may have what what uh, insights would you like to share with us here yeah so actually uh, data creation has uh, increased drastically over the past few years now i would say gone are the days when we can say having data itself in the first place is your distinguishing factor okay. uh, almost all the companies have data and they want to just be rich in analytics what insights can they produce out of that data with that you have computing power advanced algorithms all in all you have a perfect recipe for uh, being an ai first company now club with the fact that ai has a potential to add 15 some trillion dollar to global economy you mm. just want to nail down to the right projects and that's where the challenges part start which is where your question is so to know that uh, i think ideas are all good there are plenty of ideas and all of them are promising unless you bring numbers on the table which means that any of the project that you choose has to be value driven it has to align with the strategic vision of the company that you are working for and what i typically do is i have a my set of questions which i would like to share with the audience here is the factors that go behind choosing the right project is always ask the why of it ask why am i doing this uh, what is the purpose of it uh, what if i don't take this ai initiative is there another process through which this work can be carried out uh, or is it something that i need to build scratch up estimate the opportunity right um, see the opportunity size what is the gap that's there does it really justify the time and effort that will go into you know building such uh, infrastructure for ai investments uh, any or any or other of the projects it all looks lucrative but you need to see whether it justifies the need of sophisticated technology as good as ai uh, because uh, you have to answer yourself would i be better without it because uh, or or what kind of uh, magnitude of impact does it bring to the table next point that i consider after asking these questions is cloud economics which is i mentioned that cloud is an enabler cost compute is an enabler but you need to understand that a uh, lot of unstructured data that was previously not being used which was uh, text data or vision data now you have deep neural networks with which you can make sense of that data right and all of these networks they demand heavy cores and gpus which is the, again the cost that you need to be mindful of and these are some of the challenges that i've seen teams facing in real time and the third and the foremost is uh, explainability if you can't explain the output to yourself to your team to your manager it becomes difficult to endorse and adopt and somebody should be able to trust your output in the organization otherwise it's it's all the effort is gone waste right so you need to be able to diagnose when can i trust the model when my model starts deviating from the truth uh when should i not when when do i do not have enough confidence in the model and it starts making deviation so essentially pointing out uh what kind of impact it's having at the, on the society at large correct right uh, the set of questions that you personally ask is actually kind of uh, helping scrutinize and actually understand what uh, is the problem how what, like even when we get ai solutions how exactly is it you know going to impact if there's any other fallback or no uh, my next question to you would be uh, why is the development process for ai is not simply an extension of a software um, engineering model yeah 
Uh, actually, that's a great question. And one of the foremost thing that we need to understand is the the purpose of the software that we are building uh, hmm. using AI. So uh, one of one of the very easy way to distinguish it is uh, what I call as deterministic versus probabilistic output. And how do you calibrate your expectation based on the output? Right? It's not a typical software where I'll say there are multiple steps that it will go through. And at the end of it, you will get a certain output, which is mostly the, going to be the same in terms okay. of your traditional software. You're talking about AI. I'm not saying that, uh, so in AI, what, what the software will do is it will learn from the past data, the kind of pattern that you'll show to it. If I'll give you two data points and I'll say that historically, when this happened, this was the response behavior of the system, right? Two mm -hmm. data might not be enough. You'll lean on the data, uh, more and more as you'll accumulate it, right? So in AI, there's a typical term called as burn-in phase. Burn-in phase is when you're learning the pattern, right? And after that, as you get more and more data, you become more accurate. But you have to have your expectation set straight that it cannot be right entirely always. So that's the, that's the key difference in terms of how you develop the model. And because data is the underlying theme of AI algorithms, you in traditional software, you have to manage the code per se only, right? In AI software, you have to manage data along with code because data is dynamic. It will keep causing, uh, you know, some or the other breaks into your system. The pipeline itself may look fine, mm -hmm. but there will be silent failures in your model. Uh, data pattern, shape, size, schema, anything can change the way you're ingesting the data. You think you've made the model right? Development process is through, but you want to put it into maintenance and it might break there, right? So these are the things, uh, anything related to data, which is data distribution, collection, labeling, all of these things taken together, not to forget. Uh, data security and privacy in AI algorithms because they consume the data in a manner you want to make sure that it's not uh, having uh, giving a preference to one strat of uh, the people over the other uh, it, all in all I can say that you might think that you have adopted the best of software engineering practices or the development practices still your pro uh, you know project can fail so um, another thing is your collaboration is way different than how you collaborate in a traditional software uh, building process. There are a lot of experiments. Team has to try a lot of hypotheses and come up with the one which makes more sense uh, to have your final model being pushed to production. Uh, and th these are some of the challenges which tell you that there is more to AI software than a traditional software. Correct. Thank you so much for highlighting this because I'm sure many of our audiences do have this this confusion and many of them really think that, you know, software engineering models is kind of similar to AI just with a little more of data. But right, you were, thank you for this. It was really insightful. On the other hand, along with identifying the highest impact use cases and ROI opportunities, how to work with clients to set realistic expectations about enterprise uh, implementations of AI? Yeah. So I've actually worked in both setups. There are two ways to see this question. Uh, one is the external clients, which could be the organization that I'm working for, the customers to that organization. Yeah. And the, another key thing, which generally is an underrated skill is how do you manage the internal stakeholder uh, expectation, right? The whatever business ask is from the executives. So I'll start with the internal stakeholders first. And then largely it is still the same as compared to how do you engage with the external clients. But there are certain differences which will come out as I'll explain the process. So yeah. um, from the internal point of view, uh, when you are being asked to sit uh, with the executives and decide on to what, what projects you want to initiate, right? Uh, you first want to you know, ask them because the requirement is coming from them in terms of what is their motivation to adopt AI. And one of the key reasons for, for us to do this thing is is it really coming organically uh, for your organization to adopt AI for a particular business case or a solution? Or is it because of the uh, peer pressure? The word I use for this is, you know, fear of missing out or losing out. Like, I'm not using AI. Uh, everyone in the industry is talking about state of the art, cutting edge algorithms and all those things. Is it, you know, am I lagging behind? Am I the laggards in the industry or so? And uh, I'm not able to really figure out what I want to do with my data, but I somehow want to force fit AI into the picture. So yeah. you want to make sure that this is not the case, right? In either of the cases, you want to have an understanding of pros and cons of using AI because uh, yeah. you might use AI to solve one problem, but while you using AI, you might end up getting into multiple other problems, right? Yeah. Uh, the key underlying theme is to be uh, AI literate, what I call it as being ML aware. You need to know, uh, uh, you know, what kind of benefits come with it in uh, in terms of the challenges that it poses as well, and understanding the problem statement. What kind of data do I have? What kind of pattern does it have? Uh, is it something that is you know, hindering the scale? For example, a human expert who might be doing the same process is able to handle a certain degree of it. For example, uh, 2000 queries in a day or something. And you really want to scale it up to maybe 20K or something. 
uh, is it because of a case of multi-dimension? Like uh, there's a theory which says that a human brain cannot fathom information more than five to seven of the variables at a time. So, but you have multiple dimensions. You have a lot of variables that you want to take care of, right? There's a pattern behind that, which you want to understand the phenomena from. So that's where machine come into the picture. This is the forte of machines, the algorithms, right? They can handle that kind of data. So is it the, is it the reason that I want to adopt AI in my organization? Do I have necessary infrastructure that can support this kind of algorithm? Uh, if I already have, then I need to check the tech stickiness. Like, does it really go well with the tech stack that I already have? And in terms of, even if I end up building, you need to do a lot of uh, analysis in terms of forcing the risk that this uh, approach can bring that even if I have the tech stack, what kind of intricacies can happen while I integrate my ML piece, my ML component, which is a very small part into the entire pipeline, right? There would be a lot of challenges doing that. You need to foresee that and accommodate that and hash out while having a lot of, you know, uh, stakeholders from different teams come together before you start piping your solution. So yeah. that's from the internal stakeholders side. Now, now get back to customer. You are now talking to a customer who is your organization, who's coming to your organization, right? If somebody comes to you saying that I have figured out certain thing that I want you to work on and they, they put it in your code, right? Now from there, again, a chain of questions you have to ask, which is, you know, over and above what you ask to your internal stakeholders, you ask them that, you know, uh, they have identified a problem. You want to first do a feasibility check. You really can't start saying that you've given me a problem. I'll work out something or the other. I'll give you something, uh, but I don't know what and how it's going to be used. You can't do, really do that, right? And you can't borrow so much of time. So what yeah. you need to do is you need to have a feasibility check in terms of, you know, what is the objective? How does success look like? Uh, what kind of data would I, as a data scientist, okay. need for solving this kind of problem, right? Mm -hmm. Because the key step to building the successful AI solution is, to map a business problem to a statistical problem. If I'm not able to do that correctly, that uh, rest of the solution might not might be strayed altogether, right? So I need to understand how uh, the process that client is asking me to build a solution on, how is it done currently? Is it already there a solution that they're using and they want me to build upon that? Uh, ask domain experts about what they think are the important features that can model this phenomena. Start from there. And then comes the part which is critical to make sure that you deliver a successful project and do not really um, kind of, and set the right expectation is do not commit for a moonshot. Do not commit for a moonshot because I've seen that people come to you say that, you know, I want to make this and this change in order to have X percent uh, return or, you know, this percentage of lift. And, you know, you don't really do the headroom analysis, whether there is really a scope of it for me to, you know, meet that kind of expectation uh, and you end up committing it. So what I'll say is that have periodic checkpoints uh, show the results in a timely manner and get a client validation. It could be internal, external client. You need to have a validation in terms of, uh, this was a small part of the entire problem statement. This is what I worked upon and this is how the results look like. Now, I want to get in touch with the experts, those who are aware of this process, those who have helped you model this whole phenomena. And I want to seek their validation because this is uh, very, very crucial. If you show them the timely results and they are on board on this journey with you, they'll start trusting your approach and solution more. You don't really want to um, show the complex results saying that, you know, I'm able to deliver such a hefty solution or so. I think small wins matter a lot. And what one thing people generally miss is that towards the end of the entire solution, they'll either show a Jupyter notebook or certain working demo of something or maybe just PowerPoint slides and say that this is what we've delivered. These things do not work now. You have to have your client as a collaborator who is your partner in this journey. And I think having the entire discussion with them throughout the journey is very important. What I've done with some of my clients is, and I've received the feedback from them is, during this entire journey, I showed them what is possible with AI, what is not possible with it, and what best can be derived out of it. So, so that they might come to you with a certain expectation, but you have to calibrate it to the way, which is, you know, overall a win-win situation for them. Effectively, there are three stages. You want to start, you, you start a project and you might fail at the POC level itself, right? Which is generally happening most of the time. You try a lot of projects and, uh, you know, there are reports which suggest that 80 or 85% of the projects even do not make to the production. Now you, you might have succeeded at the POC, but you are not really able to sustain or maintain the project. You put it into production and it really doesn't either get well integrated into the system on the client side or the result is not what they expected, which is what happened if your expectations were not managed well. 
And the third thing, which is where we actually want to uh, graduate ourselves to is whatever you showed in the POC is what is getting reflected in the prod. And they both are running in a successful manner in a way. Okay. So making sure that having periodic checkpoints is very important. Doing your headroom analysis study early on in the project is very important. Foresee all the risk and always keep a cushion and a buffer for unforeseen risk and keep your uh, client or uh, whoever is your customer in this process aware of entire thing, being transparent, honest, and uh, having them as a collaborator during this journey is very, very key. Yes, thank you so much for actually putting down these very insightful pointers. I think these are these few pointers which we kind of, you know, while implementing an AI solution, kind of tend to skip out thinking that it might not be very essential. But going forward, I mean, if we do have a client as a collaborator, it actually helps to understand even their perspective, their expectations out of the solution and can help uh, soothe out the process. Um, before we end our conversation, are there any other sound bites you'd like to leave our audience with? Yeah, um, I think the very important thing for everyone, leave aside the data scientists, I think the audience will comprise of many people coming from business, the core developers and the science scientists themselves who are working on the ground is, uh, don't have this FOMO, what I mentioned in the beginning, the fear of missing out, don't just rush into AI. Always do a trade-off between what will I gain versus is it something that I'm really missing out if I don't end up using AI into this particular problem? Um, generally what ha what happened is you try to put AI into a particular cookie cutter goal mold and mm. then you say that I have to force fit this solution into this problem rather do the other way around have a problem whatever you think is going to be if solved will give you a significant gain or yield significant gain to your business you have an end goal and then you start working backwards right uh, it might be really tempting to say that, hey, I'm working on these cutting edge algorithms and technologies and all those things. But trust me, the model development itself is grueling. That's, uh, that's I think, granted. Everyone knows that, you know, building one model itself is very grueling and extensive process. But what is more, uh, you know, time consuming and very difficult for most of the data scientists to prove value is when you have a model which goes into production, how do you justify the output that is coming out of it, right? Uh, which is where the explainability part that I mentioned in the beginning uh, is, uh, is again, going to come back to you. Uh, having a due diligence in terms of what data you use, what algorithms you use. Is, this, these are a very uh, small part of the story. The elephant in the room is having the live model, having those predictions, and having someone who trust the output coming out of those predictions and being able to take action out of it. So um, keeping all the effort that it takes to maintain and monitor the model uh, and to keep such heavy systems afloat is very is very is is a huge responsibility uh, having a trustworthy solution on which somebody can act you you are making certain models so that somebody can take an action on it right so how do you convince your executive stakeholders or the customers that they you know when are the cases your model fails what are the vulnerabilities of it and when can they trust the output and start taking action on top of it? That's where the value creation, the whole circle gets completed in terms of value creation, right? So how and when can you give significant business gains? Because building such a system is a non-trivial investment. It's a non-trivial investment in terms of money, as well as the kind of time it takes to build such a system. Very true. That's, that's very important. And these are the parting notes I leave my audience with. Thank you so much, Vidhi. Those were some really insightful uh, pointers you left us with. Um, thank you so much for sharing your insights. Uh, for more content, subscribe to Engati and tap the bell icon so you get access to exclusive content coming from thought leaders from around the world. Thank you, Vidhi. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you with a new expert soon. Okay. Thank you.